Hi, everybody. It's Tim and Steve from Phantom History House. Hey, everybody. Great to see you. It is Phantom History House Calls. We are live tonight with Glory from Glorify Sound. You're going to find what she's talking about so interesting. She's going to be demonstrating her sound bowls, chimes, gongs, all the things she uses in her work, healing work of sound, which I think is really amazing. And what I love is that we met Glory uh, at one of the events we went to earlier this year up in Dunnellan. Uh, when we were at the psychic fair and had a connection with yeah. her. So I'm met, excited to learn a little bit more. Yeah, we met a lot of people. I yeah. really enjoyed that day. And I'm a little bit distracted, everybody, because as we're sitting here in the potion room talking to you, there is a deer like right there <laughs> in the backyard. I love when that happens here. I've never lived anywhere with where the deer were like, but there it's right there. Yeah, it's hopefully, like right outside the window. Hopefully, we'll not eat all my flowers I've been planting today. I haven't spent a lot of time. <laughs> That's why it's not. It's got like some fresh food. Oh, my God, I hope not. I don't know. But I mean, really, it's so cool. So if you come here to the bed and breakfast at Phantom History House, hopefully you'll see some deer. We see them yeah. this time of day at the end of the day and also sometimes in the morning. Oh, yeah. It's been so nice and cool lately, too. So, uh, yeah, he seems very happy out there. and He's got a good meal going. So anyway, I forgot to say, everybody, welcome to Phantom History House Calls. <laughs> I still want to meet the man that does that scream. It makes me laugh. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, anyway, <laughs> so we before we bring Glory in, one more thing is that half Halloween's coming, everybody. Halfway to Halloween. Exactly. It's the last weekend of April, uh, so it's right around the corner, like two weeks away. And so if you were looking for an excuse to get a little getaway, take a day off, come have a long weekend with us at the Bed and Breakfast, we're going to be doing, we're going to be decorated. I'm going to be making some special Halloween treats. Absolutely. We're going to have some ghost stories, maybe a ghost tour. So if you want to enjoy half a ween in a unique space, consider us. Uh, we're going to put some graphics and stuff up uh, over the next couple of weeks, kind of teasing with the, the few things we're going to be doing. And to Tim's point, we are going to decorate a little bit as well. By the way, if you're watching, please put in the comments where you're watching from. And as we're talking to Glory, if you have any questions, please type those in. We'd love to know. So let us know right now where are you watching from. You ready to bring Glory in? Um, yeah, absolutely. Did Let's, I miss uh, anything else? Uh, no, we're going to talk about the podcast, but we'll do that a little bit later. Oh, okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. So, everybody, tonight we're talking to Glory from Glorify Sound. Let's bring her in right now. Hey, Glory, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. We are so glad that you are here, and thank you, everybody who's watching. And like I said, if you have any questions... For, uh, for Glory, please let us know where you're watching. Oh, look, Kristen Torellini's watching. Yeah, Kristen wants to see the deer. If we could, we would. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. We can't get a camera. We should have a deer cam. Uh, we do need a deer yeah, cam. Yeah, maybe we need a deer cam. <laughs> so, Glory, tell everybody a little bit about just the basics of where you are in the world and the work that you do. Well, I am a certified sound healer. I live in Citrus County, Florida. And I got into sound healing just as a natural progression because I always was very interested in music, health, and, and spirituality. So they all kind of blended together and I sort of evolved into this whole thing. And I do sound baths around the county. I love this. I have to tell you, Glory, what was so interesting is we walked into that paranormal fair. We were getting ready to set up our space. And like right here as we walked in the door, there you were. And I was like, OK, I'm a musician. I've been a musician my whole life. I respond to music. I respond to sound. And I I guess I don't think I ever knew that there was like a healing modality based on sound. As soon as you started explaining it to me, I was like, that makes perfect sense as a musician. But I felt kind of bad that I hadn't really heard about it before. Yeah, sound healing has been around for thousands of years. I mean, it's very, very ancient uh, modality of moving energy. So um, it's just been around like before the Egyptians. There's a, on the island of Malta, there's megalithic temples that are thousands and thousands of years old that have been discovered and excavated and they found there was a particular room in one of the oldest temples and it resonated at, it's called the Oracle Chamber and it resonated at the frequency of 111 Hertz. So it's been around for a long, long, long time. Oh, very cool. Well, you know, one of the things I was here is, you know, the, like, you know, music in general is healing. You know, if you're sad, a sad song will actually make you feel better, you know. So how does this tie into kind of that kind of thinking? Is this completely different or is this just a part of that? No, it's all the same. It's all part of energy. 
energy moves and um, sound uplifts you immediately. So as long as you're hearing what is being produced in a positive sense, it is healing. So everybody, when you're looking right now at Glory in her is in her home studio, her home office, whatever. I don't know what you call it, but you can see the sound bowls on the floor. You can see the gongs, the chimes. She's going to be demonstrating all of that for us. We're going to be able to listen to it. So if you have any questions about how this works, of course, type those in. When I say thank you to everybody that's watching. Absolutely. It's like we have somebody from, uh, uh, we have Kristen in Pickens, South Carolina. We have Laura watching from Brooklyn, New York. We have a Julie from Largo and we have Debbie from across the street, which, hey, neighbor. Hey, Debbie. It's great to see you. That's so awesome. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. This is such an, and if you know somebody that wants to that should be watching right now, send them a note and tell them that we are on live on all the different socials. because It's going to be so interesting. So, Glory, what else would you like to say sort of setting this up before we start doing demonstrations? I'd like to quote a couple of great, great scientists. One is Einstein, and he said very simply, Everything is energy, and that's all that there is to it. He also said that the future of medicine will be frequency. And then Tesla said, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And that's exactly what sound is. Um, sound happens when objects come together. It causes the particles in the air to vibrate. That causes what we call frequency, which is just measured in hertz, and that is a measure of how fast or slow these particles in the air are moving in a cycle per second. So it's happening all very quickly, and the frequencies uh, <laughs> elevate you, pretty much. They clear you, they elevate you, they calm you. There's so many benefits to sound that. Wow, this is amazing. So, so is this something that I can do at home or do I need to have a professional guide? I guess maybe both are options are, are possible. Tell me about that. You can absolutely do it at home. You just need um, to be attracted to a particular sound bowl or instrument and go from there. And that was going to be one of my questions, too, is, you know, you have so many devices there in front of you. Do those, and I guess the word resonate is the right word here, do those <laughs> resonate with everybody differently? Like, would I have a different bowl that would work better for me than, say, it would for like Tim? Like the frequency of sound, the vibration. Yes, absolutely, because everybody is at a different evolutionary space. So somebody might have a little bit of trauma going on in the root chakra. These bowls work with chakras. So we have many chakras in the systems, but... Um, the, we, these bowls work with the main chakras, and I have bowls that work with the associated endocrine glands. So these bowls will address each person differently because everybody might have a different blockage in a different chakra. So that's pretty much how it works. You know, um, the vibrations uh, are conducted by the water in our body, and that's how the sound is absorbed. So you're talking about things like emotions and feelings and traumas and things, which I understand. And that's part of how you're that's the, the thing you're healing. Is there some just sort of basic physical things too? the way that I'm built or the way that my body is formulated? Does that make me want to resonate with the sound also? Yes, because um, this sound baths work on a very, very subtle but powerful cellular level. So that's where illness and disease pretty much begins on a cellular level. So sound baths, you know, brain waves are also measured in hertz too. So sound baths take the brain waves down, helps you get softer. It also lowers your blood pressure. It slows down the heartbeat. This is where the body begins to go into a deep relaxation. When the body relaxes deeply, that's when healing can take place. People have said to me, oh, so you're the one that's going to heal me. I go, no, no, no. You're healing yourself. I'm just a facilitator. I am a certified sound healer, but I like to think of myself more as an energy mover because that is what we are doing. And if we remember those quotes from those great scientists, everything is energy. That is what we're talking about. Energy moves on a very subtle level. 
This is so interesting. Thank you, everybody who's watching. Let us know where you're watching from. Glory Becca says, hi, I love you, Glory. So oh, hi to hello. Becca. So nice. So glad she's watching. So before we get into more questions, I'd like you to start demonstrating. Now, everybody that's watching, some of these sounds are a little bit quiet. And here we've worked this out on make sure you can hear it here on this, this broadcast. But I would tell you to make sure your room is as quiet as possible so you can hear as well as possible. So, Glory, why don't you start by demonstrating some of the sound bowls? Okay, I'm going to start with the root chakra. I'm going to blend it with a crown chakra and it's going to form a binaural beat, which I'll explain if you need me to explain. That's such a soothing, like, I guess soothing is the only word I can come up with, sound. And I like I, I did. I felt myself calming down immediately. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the root chakra is um, the very basic chakra where a lot of trauma really, really settles in and, and begins because it's what makes us feel connected, safe, not abandoned. You know, it gives us the feeling that we're surviving and thriving. So... That bowl is super important. They're all important, every single one of them. But um, anyway, yeah. How does how does uh, one? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Lori didn't mean to cut you off. Um, how does one? I guess there's courses, classes. How does one learn what bowls are for what chakra, things like that? Because that sounds pretty involved. Um, well, uh, through study, you know, and um, you know, and the, as you get to know your bowls, each bowl is a different chakra. For instance, the C note that I just played is the root chakra. D is sacral. E is solar plexus. My E bowl is a Moldavite in infused. My D bowl is a sapphire infused. Then there's the heart chakra. That is an F note. That is emerald infused. Then I have an F sharp. F sharp is also heart chakra, but it targets the thymus gland to boost immunity. And that bowl, it's little, but it's powerful. That bowl is multivite infused. Okay, so I, I hate to interrupt you, but I would like for you, for my own edification, I would like for you to go from bowl to bowl and say what you said about it. This is what it is. Here's the root, the, the chakra it's attached to. Here's what it's made of and play it. Can you go around and play them each? Because I think the sounds are so beautiful. Sure. All right. Well, I just played the C, so now I'm going to go to the D. The D bowl, this bowl happens to be a D sharp. It's sapphire infused. It works with the sacral, but it targets the reproductive system. The next bowl is the E, which is the solar plexus. This bowl is multivite infused, so this really accelerates even more. Because now we're not only working with quartz crystal, but we're working with gemstones as well. This is E, the note E. coming 
up in April, April 26th, as a matter of fact. I have a G. This is a G sharp. This targets the thyroid and the parathyroid. So Gloria, I can't, I am so enjoying this and I have to tell you, I have really calmed down and there is still a deer outside our window here at Phantom History House. And I think it's responding <laughs> to the sounds. I really do. It seems very calm too. Um, so we do have a couple of really good questions about this and thank you, Kristen, for these. What are, they want to know, what are these devices? What are these things that you're moving around the bowls to make the sounds? What is that? This is called a mallet. And I like to work with a rubber tip mallet. This is a, called a striker. This is suede. And um, a lot of the bowls, most of them come with a suede striker. Um, you can play the bowl with a suede. But I like the way the, for me, my personal preference is the way the rubber causes the friction is a lot smoother for me. So uh, everyone else would, might have a different opinion. So I like, these are mallets. Okay. Wonderful. And and you mentioned before you did the demonstration, you were talking about, and Kristen is at wondering this as well, each bowl is infused with a different um, substance. I think you said emerald was one, for example. Um, do those affect the sounds, affect the chakras? Uh, how does that part of this work? Yes. Well, gemstones, you know, I am a big crystal collector. I have tons of crystals. And um, if you know anything about working with crystals, Crystals also harness energy as well. So um, you're working with crystals. So when you infuse that quartz crystal is probably one of the most abundant substances on the planet Earth. But when you combine, and you know, quartz, quartz is in computers, it's in TV, it's in everything, watches. That's, you know, how you can program. Um, I don't know if you know about Vogel, but he programmed, he was an IBM, um, uh, executive and he worked with quartz crystal and he figured out a way to program quartz crystal to perform in those computers and telephones and all kinds of stuff so um, anyway getting back to quartz quartz is powerful quartz is in uh, so many different things anyway when you work with crystals when you work with quartz it, quartz, you can program quartz to do what you want it to do. So with your intention, you're manifesting what you want that quartz crystal to do. Now, combining that quartz with another gemstone, it just bumps up the power to incorporate and increase the energy of the other stone. So if I'm doing... Um, a quartz crystal bowl that's moldavite infused, that bowl will make me sway as I play it. Because I'm feeling that, you know, moldavite is extremely powerful. It's, um, you know, an extraterrestrial. So when you combine the stones with the quartz crystal, it is working on a, a couple of different levels, I feel. <clears throat> That's fascinating to, to hear. And I know you had a question, so go ahead. Well, so so we had a good another good question from Kristen who's watching. This what how does the speed at which you are going around the bowl impact the sound or the healing quality? Okay, well, bowls, playing bowls is um a, a, it can be a little tricky. And every bowl is like a person. Each one has a different texture, a different feel altogether. Like this, uh, this white bowl is frosted, so it's got a little bit of a rougher uh, finish on it. The little moldavite bowl, this particular bowl, is very smooth. It's almost like glass. So it requires different, each bowl requires a different uh, way to handle it. So I find that breathing, you know, everything is interconnected with me, you know, because it's very spiritual for me. 
So breathing as I'm doing the, going around the circumference of the bowl helps me to uh, slow things down and to allow the bowl to really resonate as it is supposed to do. So I, um, I, it's all very intuitive for me. So for this bowl, it's sensitive. I find the slower I play it, the better I, it, it performs for me. If you go too fast, the bowls are very sensitive and they're powerful. Um, so you just kind of, uh, you know, you kind of figure it out as you go. But that's what I found for me. Thank you. That's a great explanation. It sounds like a lot of it has to do with, with feel and like you said, your intu intuition. And following up on a question that actually Kelly has, um, and I want to kind of add to it. Hi, Kelly, by the way. Uh, when you treat someone, how do you address specific needs like a specific illness? And to add to that, how does somebody know that they need a sound bath? Well, when I treat someone one-on-one, -on -one, that is also a very, um, very personal thing. So it depends on the person who is getting treated and then, of course, of the way I connect with them. So I will always, the way I treat, go through all seven chakras. I always clear the energy with um, a little bit of rattling. Rattle, I always rattle at the beginning of all my sound baths too because it breaks up energy. And, um, and then I go through all of the chakras. Sometimes I use a pendulum to go over the chakras to see if I can pick up if there's any blockages on a particular chakra, and uh, we go from there. Sometimes they reveal what they what they um, what their issue might be, and if they do, then we target. I'll always work on the entire system, but then we'll target specifically. And I work with tuning forks, and I have two sets of tuning forks. I have solfeggio also, which are different frequencies altogether. And then I work with bowls for each chakra and I work with stones. So I work with a bunch of different things because they all work together. They all blend very well together. Yeah, no, that's such a great explanation. So I know that like when we work with some psychic mediums and they are doing tarot card readings or something, they can do those online via Zoom. Does, does the sound bath and the healing work you do, does that work online or does someone have to be there with you in person? Yes, it can work online. If you go to YouTube and you just type in, you know, sound baths by whatever, um, they'll come up and you you will benefit from that too because it's all coming through. Even you know, sometimes people fall asleep with my sound baths and I tell them that's probably one of the best things you can do because um, your body is completely relaxed at that point. So if you tune into uh, YouTube and you tune in, you can type in the frequencies 111 or 528. You know, they all have different, um, all the frequencies relate to different needs. So, it, it, but you can type in any one of those frequencies and, um, and, you, and, it, and you'll feel that effect from- Okay, this is so interesting. So I can imagine wanting to do some healing work on myself. And so what I would, I was assuming what I would do is connect with you, have a session, at least one online, and you could tell me, okay, here's the frequencies that, that you need for whatever you want to accomplish or that respond to you, whatever. Then I could, you're saying I could actually go on YouTube and find videos with these sounds and I could use those myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you go to YouTube, let's say 528, 528 Hertz, is a frequency that repairs DNA. So um, I love that frequency. I have a couple of bowls in that frequency. They're not here right now, but this gong is called subatomic. This gong works on the subatomic level, the quantum physics level. This gong breaks apart DNA and reconstructs it in a perfect order in that double helix. So this gong, when I play this song loud, it rocks the house. It's amazing. Can you demonstrate the gong for us now? Sure. You want me to play it full strength? <laughs> well, why don't you start not full strength first? <laughs> I'll start slowly.
levels. So this is so interesting because as a musician, I have I know that gongs are used in certain music for certain effects, right? In classical music and others. And so, but the idea that you're saying that the gong can actually deconstruct and reconstruct DNA because of how it's vibrating, that is so fascinating to me. This particular gong is meant for that. So this particular gong has that ability. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. That's why I got this one. This was my very first gong that I ever bought. Until this day, I have other gongs. You know, they are beautiful and they have a lot of energy and power to them. But this one particular gong really just takes it to another level. All right. Oh, and I found that interesting too, is, is, you know, you said that was your first gong. How long have you been doing this kind of work and what got you interested in it? If you don't mind me asking. Good question. Well, this little bowl, this bowl is a Tibetan bowl. It looks like nothing, but it's, it's, it's got a beautiful tone. This is Tibetan bowl. And this was my very first bowl that I bought and I have it for about 35 years, so I'm doing it a little while. Mm -hmm. And did you want to answer uh, Chris's question? Yeah, we have a really good, interesting question from Chris. And this is interesting because I know that I immediately had the same condition he did. I know that if you have a glass with a certain amount of water in it and yeah. you're vibrating, you can create a, that is playing a certain no frequency, thus a certain note. And that's why we've seen people play glasses. They can put different amounts of water in the glasses and they will they will vibrate on and create certain so, notes. So is everybody thinking about Miss Congeniality right now? That's what I'm picturing. It's that movie where she plays all the glasses, right? Really? I don't remember that. that Does that, she really? That was Miss Congeniality's talent. Well, thank you for Texas. your contribution to tonight's program. I'm not a musician. <laughs> no, but Chris, to Chris's point though, that is a certain note, a certain <laughs> frequency, a certain pitch. When some people hit a certain pitch with their voice, you know, I always say voice is your very first instrument. And I love to connect my voice because I'm a singer. So I love to connect my voice with the bowls when I'm going to be, oh, you know, whatever. But connecting that is, um, it ties it all together. So, so, so you're saying you sing, you're a singer. So when you yes. sing, do the bowls vibrate all around you? I would assume they would. The, the bowls to me are my extensions of me. They, these bowls teach me how to play them. And I feel that they are, I'm most comfortable behind these bowls. You have to remember that most people come to sound baths maybe once a month, maybe once a year or whatever. I'm behind these bowls almost daily. And this stuff has taught me, has shifted my life in an amazing way. In the sense where I know, I think in terms of, no longer do I think in terms of thought. I think in terms of thought forms, because now I'm so connected with these vibrations and frequencies that I'm always thinking in frequency. And that's how, you know, <laughs> it takes me into wow. home. That's so, so interesting. So you, you first found out about this, you bought your first bowl and then you've just, then you got certified, you studied, you've learned more and more, and now you're out here doing healing work. So I don't, we didn't say this up till now, but if someone wanted to reach out to you, have to do an online session or come there and do an in-person session, how do they reach you? They could go to Glorify Sound on Facebook and they can message me and, um, and I will uh, see what we could do. Okay, very good. And by the way, my cousin Kelly says, as a special ed preschool teacher and a grandmother, I've long known music is powerful. I'm wondering if there are specific things I can do with my class and grandkids that will help them focus. So that's really interesting. She does a special ed, um, what'd she say? What'd she call it? A uh, special ed preschool. Yeah. So like, is there, are there things that she can use these sound bowls or these other tools to help her students focus and calm down? Yeah, uh, yeah I would, I would definitely say yes to that. Um, with children, you have to be careful a little bit because sometimes a sound might trigger something else, you know. Um, so uh, I would say start off lightly, maybe with rattles or maybe with a nice chime. 
uh, like something that's so easy to listen to. You know, like if you have um, a little chime, even like this, you know, you can start off by simple percussion instruments and getting them involved and engaged in that and then go from there. Um, a bowl, I would test drive that just because some of the notes and the frequencies might be a little intense for their energy because children are extremely psychic and extremely perceptive. Okay, that's really, really interesting. And I can imagine just getting a triangle, like the, the basic musical yes. instrument. Yes. And that they would definitely that will definitely get their attention. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, to piggyback on what you were saying earlier, so, sorry, Glory, uh, you're on Facebook as Glorify Sound. So anybody watching, if you want to learn more and connect with, with Glory, you can do that directly through Facebook. I just want to make sure everybody saw that. Uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So th then um, we have another good question, um, too. Um, you're playing the outside of the bowl. What happens if you if you do that on the inside of the bowl? Does it not resonate the right way? I'll demonstrate that. I don't think so because um, the inside of the bowl is co is, is smooth. It's it's not coated in, in. Oh, there you go. It does resonate a different way. Absolutely. And um, you, I I just noticed it started a buzz. You know, so you know I would have to play around with that. Interesting. Okay. And, 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 you, and you talked about, you know, the, the first bowl that you found. So somebody had a really good question. Um, I think it was Laura. Um, which bowl might you recommend for a beginner who is able to only get one to kind of start out? Yeah. Where would you start in, yeah. if you wanted to do this? What would yeah. you get and where do you get one? Yeah. Okay. So that's a personal question, too. You know, that depends on how what you're attracted to. I started off with the heart chakra because I always from my meditation teacher back in New York City, way, way, way back in the 70s, she would always start teaching breath work from the heart. So I connect very easily to the heart chakra because of that training. So I think the first crystal bowl I ever got was a heart chakra, which is an F note. And um, that would be this bowl. But somebody else might want to stay you know, some some people like to go in order. Oh, the root chakra it appeals to other people. So then that you would start at the root. So it really depends on what you're really um, attracted to most. I would say. So you've been you played a little bit of the chimes, but there's um, Addis. I think is might be how you say the name. Wants to you to play the crystal yeah. bar. I do. Let me demonstrate. Addis comes from all of my sound bands. <laughs> And we just love her. So hold on a second. Oh, wow. So this harp is pure quartz crystal. It is 432 hertz. And this one is called Mystic E. I have two of these harps. They're from Poland. I have two of them. They're tuned differently. And I said, um, I mentioned that this one is called Mystic E. So it gives a little bit of a mystical feel, but I'll play it for you and you'll see what I mean. That is absolutely beautiful. And I have to tell you, like, I'm so glad we scheduled you to help talk with us tonight because I am like so calmed down. That's like good. seriously, like all of this, these sounds stopping and listening to them resonate, listening to the high sounds and the low sounds, from, like in the gong, it's, it's, I'm responding to it. And I know I would as a musician, but um, I'm really enjoying this glory. Now you had a question. I, I do. And of course we always talk about, you know, we're, we're creepy yet comfortable getaway. Um, he's comfortable and I'm creepy. So of course I have to be the one to ask about the spiritual side of this, the ghosty side of this. Um, you know, I've always heard, you know, energy cannot be created or destroyed. You talk about how there's a lot of energy involved in these bowls. What kind of impact does this have on the spiritual realm? Does it do ghosts and spirits respond to this kind of thing? 
Absolutely. You know, everything is vibration. Every emotion. I'm going to go into the spiritual realm for a, a minute. Um, the angels, the archangels, they all are vibrating at a different frequency. You know, one of the archangels is for protection. Well, protection, courage, and bravery, all of those are frequencies. So it does open up the realms to into the divine. Um, I had to translate something and I it went out of my head. But anyway, yes, it, it does absolutely go along with the spirituality. I, find I have I, I hate to I have to say that there are still deer in the backyard. Like I think we're calling them in. Seriously, this is amazing. Like the glory there is close to the house as they have ever been tonight. I don't know if you can see that. That's right outside of the back. Like they window. are right there. I, and, and they never come this close. I really think that the sounds of the chimes and things are bringing them in. Like this is anyway, it's a little bit of a side. You had said, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to ask you if I could tell a story about doing a sound bath at a particular. Um, we would love that. Please. Okay. So um, this is one of the places I, I did a sound bath a little while back at a crystal shop. And I was in a room with no crystals. So it was just me, my tools, and the people that were attending. So I came in, did my sound bath, did the whole thing, finished, packed up, left. The next day, the store owner sent me an email and I didn't know this, but in that room where I did the sound bath, there was a little security camera going on. So she sent me about an eight minute video of the energy that was in that room after I had left, after I did the sound bath. And you know, the little orbs that you see like in a, in a little picture here and there. Well, there were so many of those orbs flying across the room in every direction, up, down, across, through the wall, under the door, in the closet. I mean, it was everywhere. So that really blew my mind to, to actually see the energy moved from that sound bath. And um, then I had done another sound bath in another place, totally different venue. And um, after I did the sound bath there, all of the locks locked down. The electronics just went nuts. So the sound that's produced from these, these tools and these bowls, is very, very powerful. Uh, you might, you know, sometimes I equate sound bath to massage or Reiki session. And those are very physical. The reason why I use that is because it caused it, it it creates a mental image of how these bowls move energy as well but these bowls are moving energy on a very deep like we said earlier deep and subtle cellular level where everything begins right so i want to make sure and reiterate something that you said earlier if i was someone who was dealing with a certain physical issue an illness or something and I want to try this modality for healing. I could have a session with you, talk about what I need or whatever. You would get to know me or figure out what I might need. And then you could do a healing session. This could happen online as well as in person. Yes, I've never done one personally online just because I'm not a techno person. <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows I'm kind of like crazy with that. But, um, but I would love to try, you know, if, if it really came to that point, I would learn that for sure so that I could work with people online. Well, and I have to tell you, you're being very sex heavy, tech, tech savvy. <laughs> you're being very tech savvy tonight because here we are on live online and you're doing wonderful. And I have to tell you the sounds that are coming through on the StreamYard system that we're using are absolutely Thanks. wonderful. Do you have a question? Uh, I, well, a question and, and a comment. Um, Kelly watching said that she was not feeling well when this live started and was getting ready to go get medicine, but is feeling better already. So um, it does show that okay. there's trouble. So then I'm going to interrupt everything and I'm going to ask, I want you to play the bowls again, Make, play more bowl sounds for me and for Kelly, because I love it. Okay. I'm also going to play the chimes because I feel Sometimes the chimes just drop you in very, very softly and easily. Okay. So, so just make some wonderful sounds for us that you think would give us some healing tonight. I will do that. 
Gladly. I absolutely loved that. Thank you so much for that. I'm I'm feeling really wonderful. Same. Um, it's 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 so amazing, and I I love that you're doing this work and that you're putting all of this healing energy and work out into the world. And and we one more question for you before we wrap up. Well, it's kind of a lie. It's two questions, but in one. Um, so Laura is wondering, uh, what does a person feel like after experiencing a live sound bath? And additionally to that, what do you feel like after you administer one of these? Okay. Well, most of the people after, when I finish a sound bath, I always say one thing, drink a lot of water, we moved a lot of energy. That's exactly what has happened. But a lot of people have come up to me after every sound bath and tell me how relaxed they feel and how they feel like they're floating. As far as I go, <laughs> I feel like I'm floating. <laughs> I do this a lot and I cook a lot at home. So when I cook, I have to cook in the morning because after I practice an afternoon sound bath, there is no way I could do any cooking. <laughs> so it takes me personally out of so much of the, of the busy mind and really brings in, it opens up, it connects me to my higher self. For sure. I feel, um, you know, when you do deep breathing, you kind of feel like um, almost a little high, you know, because it's 
it's slowing down everything. And that's what the sound bath does for me. It makes me feel elevated completely. And a, a quick follow-up question to, to that. Um, do you get sound baths yourself from somebody else who gives sound baths? Or does this kind of work as your sound bath therapy by giving them? I'm not sure what you what you what you well I mean I, I think she's she can do this for herself. I think right. is what she's saying. Right, I guess that's my question. Yeah. Yeah, do you yeah. do you have to have somebody like you can't if I, if you were a massage therapist, you somebody has to do that for you. For this, if you sit down with your bowls, you can you can give yourself the therapy and healing that you feel like you need. Yes. I I um I have been to other people's sound baths, not too many, because I I find that me playing bowls for myself, like I said, I practice all my sound baths before I go live with them. And um it just is working magic on me constantly. I feel my whole body, mind, spirit has shifted from the years of playing it. Consistency with sound baths is key also. So because I'm behind these balls quite frequently, the consistency of always being around different frequencies has um, transformed my myself, my, my own being. Well, that would be sort of like any spiritual practice. If you're meditating yeah. every day, you get you get better at it as you get used to doing it. And it's sort of a thing that you need to keep doing sort of right. like continuing to exercise, eating well. It's all just part of taking care of yourself. This is a whole nother way. Right. Right, absolutely. And I feel that my it's is very proactive in, in taking care of yourself for uh, physical well-being and mental well-being. It's, it's, it's being proactive, I feel so. It's, it's a great alternative. Well, we want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching tonight. And you've gotten some wonderful comments, Glory, in the comment section. Yeah, people complimenting how beautiful this, the sounds are, how you've changed some people's lives with your sound baths. Um, people are grateful for you ans answering their questions for those of us who aren't as familiar with it. So thank you for that as well. And remember, everybody who is watching, you can find Glory and Glorify Sound on Facebook. Um, and in our, uh, we'll also link to it here in the event page on Facebook as well. And I believe I tagged you in a couple of our posts this week as well. So, right. Um, and of course, the, the recording that we're doing this live conversation right now, but the recording of this conversation will still be here on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook channels, um, on Instagram. So if you are watching and you know anybody, whether you're watching live or later, and you know anybody that would like to experience this, hear about this, learn about it, please share the video with them. Cool. cool. And All right. Yeah, you, you keep following us. Keep following uh, Glorify Sound. And uh, it's good to be back. We took two weeks off from doing the uh, Phantom History House calls. And it's good to be back. We've been a little bit busy lately. But we are working on bringing more guests in. And I also wanted to share that I am working on the next season of the Phantom History podcast. So if you are uh, in touch with or have investigated or are a historian of a historic location, I'm look actively looking for places to feature on the next season. So please reach out to me. I would love to chat with you and uh, see if we can't connect and, and get you included to get out um, on the podcast channels later this summer. Well, and we are trying to do these Phantom History House calls, these live conversations every Wednesday night, usually at 7 p.m. Eastern. So um, you can sign up for our newsletter to find out all about the stuff that we're doing and follow all the, the great stuff that Steve puts out on our social media. If you're following us on social media on any of these platforms, then you would know about the next conversation that we're having. And uh, it's it's so exciting. Everybody would watch tonight. And, uh, and I have to say, like, Glory, you were just wonderful. This was such a great demonstration. What Do you have anything you want to say, anything you want to leave the audience with about anything that we've done tonight or, or about your work? Wow. I um, All I would like to say is thank you so much for being there, for your support, for your love, kindness. And um, just for yourself, know that your own voice is what is your very first instrument and use it well say prayer <laughs> or um you know speak well and um i think that's it but thank you so much once again everyone i appreciate it. and thank you so much to tim and steve for inviting me well we've loved this conversation i thought this was going to be really cool but it was like we exceeded my expectations on how interesting this was 
And once again, we still have deer in the backyard. This never happens, Glory. They usually come and go, and they've been here this whole time. Yeah. It's quite remarkable. I, I think it's the sounds. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Glory, for this wonderful presentation. We'll see everybody next week and next time on Phantom History House Calls. Yeah, wonderful job. Thank you.